Understanding the problem is 80% of science. The solution, you can spend your life working on the solution, but find a good problem. That can change your life. So we're going to just talk about the problem. Here's one. Here's a, well, my friends from the, the Chicago School of Economics, which is the university that won most Nobel Prizes in economics, not most Nobel Prizes, most Nobel Prizes, that would be MIT, thank you very much, or Harvard, not me, I didn't win anything. Let's put it, I am a bad player in a good team. But, the, the, but in economics, Chicago is the university that won the most prizes. And they have very elegant mathematics, and they can say, wait a minute, there's money, there's product, there's a market, supply and demand will meet. What do you care about this? What is this logistics? To them, it's a little bit like a friction in physics. Is it this? You discount it. Yes, okay, in theory, that may be, my friend. But look at this. This is what happens. When you put a product into the market that is superior, that is a better price than existing products and that produces that can cure you better, for example, it doesn't instantly reach the market. In a developed nation, actually, this is a number of years, and this is actual average of a lot of medicines. This is how long it takes. In a developed nation, it takes maybe eight years for a superior product to reach perhaps 80% penetration, market share. Why? Well, there's a very a, a long number of reasons. One could be, let's go back to my nona. La nona always, when you, are, you have a, a, a fever, would always give you the recipe of the family. And you can give her a, any scientific evidence you want, but she knows that the, the nona of the nona of the nona of the nona of her nona always gave her, gave, gave her that. And that's it. You know, people don't change. You get adapted, you, you like one thing, and you don't want to change. That is part, clearly, of the challenge, but it's not just that, because look at what happens in a developing nation. The same medicine takes forever to reach market penetration. If in a, if in a developed nation, maybe a good medicine reaches 80, 90% of the market in five, six years, in a developing nation, some things take 20 years, 30 years. And I can understand a lot of things that humans are different, but don't tell me that the people in developing nations are more stubborn than la mia nona. They're all equally stubborn. All the nonas in the world are the same. So there must be something else we can do to try to make people change. Part of it must be that medicines are not reaching the people. And that is, is the disease we're trying to cure. And that is exactly what we do for a living. So you heard a lot of elegant mathematicians. We are we, uh, in logistics, come from a branch of mathematics, but we, we left the core of mathematics. At the heart, mathematics is not exactly um, necessarily a science in the following sense. If you go back to the origin of, of what science means, the epistemology of science, science should be using the scientific method. And the scientific method means you have an idea, you test it, you challenge it with reality, and as long as that idea is not disproven by an experiment, it holds. But in science, you can never prove anything. Even the law of gravity is not really a law. What happens is, as of now, that is what we know. But if one day you do one experiment, my, for example, my sister is an astrophysicist. <laughs> I don't even know what she is. She's very, very smart, a lot smart. I'm the dumb kid in the family. But if one day she's actually measuring gravity and she has a theory, if she comes up with something and she does an experiment and gravity is different, then I'm sorry, Mr. Newton, you, you, you were very useful to us, but he may be wrong. In mathematics, you're never wrong. If you write a theorem, it's a theorem. It's detached from reality. In essence, then, what we need is to use, so we branched out of that mathematics, but it's a very beautiful way of thinking. So we took that beauty that a lot of professors here at Nobel Prize, smarter people and better people than I am, developed, but what we're trying to do is get that and apply it to something. So we're bringing it back to science. Bring the elegance of mathematics back into science, which is back to reality, and apply it. And what we do is a science of delivery. There's another way of saying exactly what, what Enzo does. Is, we study delivery, how to make things happen, in a way. 
And that is how we all ended up in, in health. It's kind of like a long story to reach to the point that I want to reach, but I think, like I told you initially, the devil or God is in the details. How we get there matters. So I think, I really, I'm, what I'm trying to sell to you is that we can contribute. I mean, at least it's worth a, uh, worth a fight, worth a shot. Am I speaking too fast? Ah, perfect. You know, with Italian and Argentine blood, I speak very, very fast in my native language. So giving them a very hard time. Now, because it's all about details, it's very good to talk in general, but let's go to something more particular. And I always think like that. When I teach in a class, before I make a move, before you make a move in a, in a chess game, you have to understand the position. So I always go from general to particular. You can't discuss the particular if you don't understand why you're doing something. So we started from general, uh, a general question, which is, why are people dying? And now we're going to pick one disease, HIV. Why HIV? Well, because, like I mentioned before, today you shouldn't die of HIV. Well, first of all, you shouldn't get HIV because there's a lot of ways to protect yourself, and I'm going to go, not going to go into that. I don't want to get in trouble with the church, which is nearby. <laughs> but you know, and I know, you shouldn't get it if you protect yourself. And now, having said that, and, and sorry, I don't want to get in trouble, even if you get HIV, you should not die of HIV because this disease is treatable. So this fits exactly the conditions that we talked about. The medicines exist, and as I'm going to show, there will be money, so there's money and there's medicines, then I postulate it must be a logistic problem. If someone dies today of HIV with medicine existing and with money existing, it's a logistic problem. And that's why we're going to talk about HIV. So a little bit of background on HIV. Today we're talking about it's not a small disease. It's 33 million people. Now here is the unbelievable fact. In 2002, only 200,000 people were under treatment. Two-thirds of the deaths of HIV happen in Africa. But Africa is only 10% of the world population. So they are paying the price of HIV. Essentially, the burden of HIV is extremely high in Africa. As of now, there's 12 million orphans created by this disease. 12 million kids whose father or mother died because of this disease. This is a real, a real picture of a girl finding out that her mother died of HIV. Now, I am very sensitive to that because my mother was killed in Argentina during a military dictatorship. And I don't want to get into politics of who's right or who's wrong. I, all I'm saying is I know what losing a mother means. So I, for me, when I saw this picture for the first time, it brought me home. It reminded me of my own history. So maybe this is a sign that we should try to do something. At least I should, of all people. So what is HIV? OK, HIV, I'm not a, a medical doctor. I am a doctor that can't cure. I'm a doctor in business. But at least you can know that I can tell you, if you don't know, that HIV is a virus. And if you take medicines, the virus, although it's never eliminated, or as of now, we can't eliminate it from the blood, HIV does not develop into AIDS. AIDS is the condition that happens if you have HIV and you don't treat it, for the most part. Sometimes even taking the medicine, you can, you can develop HIV, uh, AIDS, but AIDS is not a, a necessary condition after having HIV. However, if you don't treat it within a year, on average, you may be dead. This is the distribution of HIV. And not surprisingly, look at this. Sub-Saharan Africa, 22 million people have HIV. There's no other region with so many infected. Not even close. I mean, if you look at it, the next region with most infected people is Southeast Asia with 4 million. But Southeast Asia has a lot more population than Africa, than Sub-Saharan Africa. So now we're talking 22 million out of a population much smaller versus 4 million. It is not even close. It is very clear that the battle for HIV will be fought 
won or lost in Africa. That's where 